There are two winners of this year's Brian Mercer Award for Innovation. Dr. Jard Al-Glav at University College London and Professors Mohamed Misous and Mike Kelly at Manchester and Cambridge University, respectively. Dr. Jard Al-Glav and her team at UCL have developed software tools that allow multi-processor chip manufacturers to test for errors. Some of these bugs may lead to subtle differences in output when the same program is run on different processors, a problem particularly associated with concurrent programming. So you, you write your program in a high-level language such as C++ and for some reason you were working with a, an Intel machine and you change your mind and want to work with an ARM machine. When you run your compiled program, the transform program, it's not going to necessarily show the same results. Well, we're trying to figure out what these chips actually do so that programmers can use these chips. So if you've learned how to program on an x86 machine and in your first job you get an ARM machine, then you're going to get surprises, I think. For the last year, I've developed tools that have been able to test these chips, and specifically GPUs or graphics chips. And it led to some very interesting behaviors and um, surprising behaviors and people who programmed these things. Many of them didn't know these sort of things were possible. And so we developed tools that would uh, generate tons of little tests to probe particular bits of the machine. And by hammering the chip with lots of work to do, it sort of makes the chip busy. And when the chip gets busy is when some of these strange behaviors show up. When we wrote the first version of that tool, I really thought that we had just reinvented something that they had internally since the 70s. But it feels that they didn't have this tool. It's really surprising to a lot of people, and including us. I think that the tool development is going well. But what we could use is all the rest in setting up a company, I suppose, because we're just a bunch of academics, so we have absolutely no idea. We want to use that funding to really work on engineering efforts on these tools and make them very usable in, in many environments. Investigating uh, patterns and also have like an engineer full-time on the job, that would be great. Professor Mohamed Misous at Manchester University together with Professor Mike Kelly at Cambridge University, are the second award winners. They have been working for 20 years to develop a way to commercially manufacture faster and more temperature-independent computer chips based on the physics of quantum mechanical tunneling. At the quantum mechanical level, particles behave both as solid objects and as waves. The real bottleneck now with tunneling diodes is that this Quantum mechanical phenomena is incredibly dependent on the thickness of this wall you're trying to, to cross. A typical tunneling diode might be 10 atomic layer thick. However, if you build a, a set of diodes where the tunneling barrier varies, say, by just one atomic layer, their electrical characteristics might change by up to 300%, making them literally useless for engineering applications. So what has held up tunneling devices to be exploited has really been the manufacturability. Can we make these barriers absolutely exact? Well, we have to build this barrier to within a tiny fraction of an atomic layer. So how did we achieve that? Well, we use the technique called molecular beam epitaxy. So in this technique, you deposit the, the exact tunneling barrier we were working with. We grew at extremely low rates to better than one hundredth of an atomic layer per minute. So what the Brian Mercer Award allowed us to do is to try the, the new ideas we had, and now it is enabling us to make a large-scale fabrication of these devices. But it's not just the resources, it's also the recognition from the Brian Mercer. That's been fantastic. I will tell you, the dream is to have this in every mobile phone.